Uh, do I start? Yes. Okay. You're listening to The Dollop on the All Thang Comedy Network. This is uh, by... Um, Come on, buddy. Pedal? No. American I mean, it's History? actually not even a... It's actually just a weekly podcast. I don't even think you need to say it anymore. It's po- actually, it would make a lot of sense to drop it. So just say it's a weekly podcast. Three, two, and action. This is a weekly podcast. Good. Now I'm confused. Of course. Uh, it's about American history. My name is Dave, and I do it with... Oh, my God. Gareth Reynolds. <laughs> and I don't know what the topic is about. So... Good you Lord. threw me, man. That, I that's like, really not a big note. How many, I mean, I've been it's I've been saying you to drop a buy. I've been saying it just absolutely like saying one less buy perfectly for like four hundred episodes. Now the intro to you, my look, nailing it. Every I get time. to complain about the preposition ending, but I don't care. But your beef is you've gone. It's, you're like you you're like you tr- you treat the intro like jazz. You're like what? we'll find it, baby. Thank you. Let's go out there and we'll find it together. Okay, so you notice I'm doing jazz. Over not in here. a bad way. Like I'm doing. Yeah, but you're doing jazz like during a rock set. So it's like you. Like nobody doing... wants nobody wants that person. It's like nobody you... needs that person. It's like you doing a podcast with Monk, right? Thelonious Monk. You're over here. We're jamming, and I'm. By the way, look, I'm I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I don't mean to. I'm yes. not trying to pull any age card. You can't say monk to me and think that I'm going to go to Thelonious first. I go to Tony Shalhoub, the I OCD investigator. Well, that's why I said so, it. And by I the way, your, it's a lot clo- it's a lot closer to doing a podcast with Tony Shalhoub saw, than it is. <laughs> I saw your face. Thelonious very, monk. Very confused. I'm very confused. I was like, doing, okay, I guess. And I mean, you do look. You're, you're Shalhoub esque, I suppose, if you really want the compliment. I didn't know I'd have to say this the first name, but I did because yeah. you. Well, monk. He doesn't. Go, Thelonious monk goes by Thelonious monk. Monk goes by monk. <laughs> I can't believe I've said monk so many times. It's lost all purpose and meaning. Anyway. Anyway. Um. um uh, <laughs> <laughs> and called it quote his jam pad. Jam pad. I'm the fucking hippo guy. Dave, okay. My name's Gary. <laughs> My name's Gary. Oh. Wait, is it for fun? And this is not going to become the Tickly Podcast. Okay. <laughs> this is like anarchy. On a five part coefficient. <laughs> Come on, the now hit him with the puppy. <laughs> you both present sick arguments. <laughs> no sleep till hippo. No sleep till hippo. Uh, action part. Gary. No. Nicely done, my friend. No. Now it's over. A lot of dead air at the end of it, it looks like. Now it's over. Read your stoofs. Okie dokie. Hey, everybody. It's Gareth from the Dollar Podcast. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> do you like to laugh? Gosh, I do. And if you do, come join me on the road for some live stand-up comedy. New York Times calling me the best comedian ever of all time. Um, hmm? I will, that's uh, two weeks ago. Um, December 2nd through the 4th, this coming weekend, I'll be in Appleton, Wisconsin at the Skyline Comedy Club. Then Sunday, December 5th, this weekend, Sunday, I will be in Chicago, Illinois at the Den Theater. Then I will be uh, December 17th, I'll be at the White Rabbit in Indianapolis. Then I'll be in Fort Wayne in the Tiger Room on December 18th. December 19th, I'll be in Somerville, Massachusetts at the Crystal Ballroom. That's a Sunday. And then I'll be uh, New Year's weekend I'll be at the Comedy Club of Kansas City December 30th through January 1st. Let's ring in this new exciting year together, Kansas City. Uh, go to GarethReynolds.com for information. Oh, and I love that. I love that, too. I uh, love that you love that. Uh, yeah, thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm going to do an anti ad Wait, hold on. Let's yeah. also say December 10th, we'll be at the Observatory in San Diego doing our last live dollop of the year. And there's a good chance that Pam Reynolds might be there. Oh. So. Woo-hoo. And her favorite son. Um, oh, uh, your brother's going to be yep. there. Um, <laughs> that was just, no, that's the truth. <laughs> Aaron's laugh yeah, Aaron's was like, just so like, hey. like yeah. is that real? <laughs> So uh, I'm going to do an anti-ad. Okay. Um, went on, uh, you know, Thanksgiving vacation with some relatives. Uh, I'd never, I haven't rented an Airbnb in ages. I just stopped doing it a while ago because we had bad experiences. But it was like, there was, it was like the cheapest and best thing, you know? So sure. I rented a very nice place. Sure. And, um, and I was like, oh, this is a good deal. Now, I didn't know how bad Airbnb can be, but it's not really Airbnb that's the problem here. So so as soon as I made the reservation, it popped up Vacasa. 
Mm-hmm. So Vacasa is another company, V A C C A S A. Sure. And they own properties and then they rent them through Airbnb. Sure. And it's uh, that's what the model. So what, that's what we that's all. That's how should, it should be. Yeah, it's it should how it should be. Go. You should be du- be double and triple renting through people. Absolutely. No. So um, <laughs> at now our plane was delayed. Uh-huh. As they are, sure. like four hours. So at the That's time, spirit for you. Baby. Yes, at the time our uh, plane is supposed to land, I get a text yeah. and a call from Vacasa that like our condo is not available. Sure, sure. Mm-hmm. And is this this to you is uh, problematic? Yeah, because that's where I'm actually staying. Sure. Okay. And they offer us two uh, separate versions, two separate places that are nowhere near as good. Like yeah. just shitty, but shitty comparisons. But at least then your kid can live alone for a week. That's right. Yeah. So just shitty comparisons. And they're like, these are what we can offer you for the same price. And I'm like, you know, well, that's obviously not acceptable. Right. Um, I call Airbnb and Airbnb is like, yeah, we'll look into it. So we're fucked. Okay. Right. Basically, we're just fucked. We right. paid a lot of money for this place. We're not getting it. Uh, turns out they do this constantly. Vacasa. Vacasa. Sure. And Airbnb does not allow you to put a review on a site if you've been canceled an hour before you're supposed to check in. Weird. I wonder if that's <laughs> that. Sounds odd. So uh, my sister actually looked into it. She was furious. She was on the emails. And she found um, a scientist. A scientist looked at the data. And I'm not, I'm not crazy about this scenario already. He's, this is what he said. The most common Airbnb scam. The host offers a nice accommodation for a good price. Unbeknownst to the guest, the property was listed more than once uh-huh. on Airbnb and potentially other short-term rental platforms. Once at a cheaper rate and once at a much higher rate. If the host has a new guest make a booking at the higher rate, they cancel the guest who booked at the lower rate, usually last minute. But that's not what happened to us. That's one of their scams. Because I went to the place. You went to where you... Of, of course you did. You went to where you were, where they canceled? Yeah, this is what they said. They said... They said... <laughs> this is my house! You are an... Are you... I just want to look at it. They said... Uh, they said, well, there's construction going on. Uh-huh. And I said, well, how long did you know the construction was going on? Could you not have told me yesterday? We found out or the day, day before? Four, four and they said, well, it was yeah. supposed to be done this morning. I said, well, so why are you calling me at 3 p.m.? If it was not done this morning. Yeah. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Whatever. So I go to the place. Uh-huh. The entire building's gutted. Oh, my God. The entire building is gutted. The, enti- the plastic over everything, the balconies, it's being completely redone. And it hasn't had a person in it for months. <sighs> wow. There's no recourse. So what, do you get, you get your money back? Airbnb gave me my money back. But and then you're still like, and, you, uh, you have to figure out where you're going to live. Yeah, well, then you have to spend more money. Right. So there, you should use Airbnb. They have a. <laughs> but Vacasa is the main, and they clearly work together. But Vacasa right. is this company that runs out tons of. And here's the thing, I say this to my sister, and she goes, "This is what happened to us in Lake Tahoe five years ago. We had a family reunion. We rent through Vacasa. We Vicasa. go to the house. It's fucking canceled. It's amazing." It's, it's the exact same thing, and then we stay in a shittier place. It was the exact same fucking thing. Five, I just didn't remember it. So this company, that's what this company does. Vacasa does this. So you're telling people don't... Stay the fuck away. From Vacasa. If Airbnb, if you rent a place from Airbnb and it says, uh, you know, Jimmy's going to rent it, and all of a sudden it's Vacasa, it's sure. a fucking scam. Get sure. the fuck out. Sure. Get the fuck out. Run. Run, Run. from Vacasa. Run. Okay. Well, I think that's good. Aaron, did you learn something? Sure. Okay. Good. All right. Good. Um... Well, that sounds fun. Yeah. That's cool. It was fun. We also, Dave, have to remind people that we have a live virtual show, I just remembered. Mm. December 16th, we have a live virtual show that we're doing with Moment House. Um, We're very excited about. We will be doing uh, it at 6 p.m. Pacific time. You can go to momenthouse.com slash the dollop to get tickets. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's going to be one of those ones, you know, where we've got a bunch of pictures and videos and Dave does it shirtless and and all that stuff. So join us for that December 16th. And we're calling it uh, Go Big and Stay Home is what we're calling it. Um, So go big and stay stay home home. December 16th. 6 p.m. Pacific time. And, go um, big. Go big and stay home. And stay home. Because of the situation we find ourselves in. Oh! Because um, things are fine. The new, uh, the new variant's called American? That's right, American. <laughs> best, best variant yet. <laughs> Woo, I got it. Worst thing that happened to me was I got stars and bars across my heart. 
I'm dying from loving America. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my iPad like this so I don't have to hold it. This is how, this is how Jesus Christ wanted. Speaking of Jesus Christ, June fifteenth, eighteen thirty-five, year of. You can say it. You can say it. I mean, uh, he was our Lord Jesus. Yes, Christ. Christ. Say it in Spanish. Our Lord Jesus Christo. Good. Well done. Thanks. It's for everybody. It's the worst. Thank you. Again, it's not jazz. It's jazz. I'm jazz. This whole fucking show is jazz. I'm so, We're 30 minutes in. You know, we should actually redo the logo and no. just say the dollop and then jazz. Like, just, it, like, in a Miami, like in a Miami Vice Starting lettering. Starting episode jazz. would be the right call. Adwa Dolores McCord oh my God. was born in New Orleans, Louisiana. The name again? Adwa. Edouard? Edouard? We're okay. going to change. She'll, she, it'll be more English. Is in it A D R O I T? A D O I S? A D, okay. Edouard? Edouard, okay. At least that's what I was told. Someone's going to say that's wrong. Yeah. But that's what I was told. It's Adias. Her mother, Marie, was a super good looking mixed race woman. Okay. She was French Creole. Okay. Uh, her father. Creole, for those of you who are. <laughs> that's correct. Her father was a very respected uh, shopkeeper, not not doing that well with the shop. Uh, he was a free black man. Okay. Named. Where are we? Are we in New Orleans? We're in New Orleans. Okay. New Orleans, okay. I think they yep. say it. Nah. Right. They love when people do that. They too. do that. They do that. Um, named uh, as father August Theodore was her father. She had one brother and one sister. Uh, they were raised Catholic. Although, um, at one point, uh, she said she was born in uh, Bordeaux, France, as Marie Rachel Adelaide de Ver Spencer. Okay. <laughs> Wait. So she is like, she's like, I don't love the name Adwa. <laughs> I guess not. So, and she's, she's, so she's, this is again, I mean, <laughs> always good. How old is she? She's young. Oh, she's young. But then, she's later saying, on, she would, we're talking about her past. So later on, she would say she was also. Born in France. Right, okay. And her name was Marie Rachel sure. Adelaide de Ver Spencer. Sure, yep. Close. Yeah. Close I mean, to the original. If you're going to make up a name, make it yeah. nine. Sounds ten. like she's working with Monk. Yeah. Uh, Adelaide? Celebrate. Oh. Yeah. I tried to hit it, but thank you, Aaron. That did deserve a spotlight. Um, Fuck you, Dave. And she said after France, she was raised in Cuba for a while, and then, then the family moved to New Orleans. She also said she was born to a French woman and a Spanish-Jewish man, and her name was Dolores Adwa uh, Los Fiertes. But another writer said she was born Ada McCord in Memphis, the daughter of an Irish merchant and his wife, Catherine. In that version, her dad died and her mother remarried, and then they moved to New Orleans. The truth is her father was August and her mother was Marie. So the version you've told us is the real one, but she... There's a lot of embellishing. And to me, that's not a red flag to just <laughs> Why would have it carved be? out four different <laughs> lives at the end of your life. That, to me, seems fine. I mean, I haven't told you this, but I'm actually... Uh, I'm living a couple other lives. Mm. Uh, doing a couple other... Po- I have two other careers. What's your uh, other... All comedians. What's your names? Uh, well, I do Smashy. Uh-huh. Smashy the Fruit I, Man, I've which is where I have a fruit stand. I didn't know that was you. It's a very offensive Italian mm-hmm. uh, situation. How I have a fruit go? stand. I mean, I don't want to do it. Because so I walk up and I go, may I have a No, banana? you're not on stage. No, I'm doing the whole thing and I have a little cart. And I walk I'm just, up and I say. Not, if, you, if you walk on the stage security, again, this is a structure. Well, I say show. it from the audience. I say, may I have a banana, sir? I, I mean, again, that's a, that would be considered heckling, but I go, a banana, what is with this guy? And I'd smash a melon. Okay. Yeah, yeah I so like that. So I do that one, yeah. um, and then I have another guy who uh, is uh, another comedian, too. Who's that? That's Magic Joseph. Um, okay. Yeah, and uh, that's comedy and magic, which I really love doing. It's a lot of Dove stuff. Uh-huh. I love Dove. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of Dove stuff, and um, yeah, so... What do you I, mean stuff? Like what... I, t- I kill a lot of doves. Same thing as the Italian guy. I'm smashing doves. Oh, so Jesus. The same thing I as thought, the Italian like, guy just taking them out of a hat or something, or? Uh, no, they basically come out of a barrel, you know. They're, <laughs> they're jammed in a barrel. Christ. There's 30 of them in a barrel. Can they fly? Well, I mean, they could. I don't allow it, you know. And by the end, they definitely can't. None of them can. This sounds less like magic and just more like a barbarism sort of horrible. Well, it's all done with curtains and Do you, you get an cloth. audience? Huh? What? Is there an audience that comes to this? Absolutely. How yeah. many? How many people? I don't. Let's get back to the story. <laughs> Come on, okay. focus. So, um, her father uh, died when one. I found some people that said seven. Other people said when she was a baby. Okay. Um, 
So Marie then sold the shop and moved into a boarding house. A Bordeauxing house. A Bordeauxing house. And that's where she met and married Dr. J.C. Campbell, who was the chief surgeon of the U.S. Army. Okay. So he's a chief. Sure. She raised Ada. Now she's been called Ada. Okay. Uh, he, raised, he raised Ada as his own child. Sure. He is very generous. He encouraged. So it's a real low bar for fathers who come into this situation. It's like he treats her like his actual daughter. It's like okay, that seems like fair. What he should as be a, doing, as opposed to a stranger. Yeah, as opposed or... to a guy who's like, "Don't touch me. Touch your mom. You yeah. ain't come from me." <laughs> this thing is just blink and come, as far as I'm concerned. Every day she comes and out, and it ain't mine. Every day she comes out. Who the fuck is this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go again. Let me guess. You need something. I just wanted some water. Oh, my God. It's all. Never ends. <laughs> Drink from the toilet like I the wanted, dog. I want a daddy. You're still here, huh? <laughs> I'm here. Jesus Christ. Ugh. I'm going to drink in the morning again. Do you have a banana? Uh, no. <laughs> Has somebody say a banana? <laughs> there he is. Uh, so he's very generous. He encourages her uh, many talents, which she has many talents. She's a writer, a painter, an actress, a dancer. And he pushes her to learn different languages, so she speaks French and Spanish. Sure. She studied the classics. She read poetry. Um, he got her dancing and horseback riding. <laughs> By the time Ada was 11, she had several poems published. What? Yeah, she's fucking rocking. This rockin is true. It. Yeah. Okay. She's she's a fucking. She's a good poet. She's a good poet. She just is. I mean, she just is, becomes a horrible liar. That's right. Right. Uh, she then danced in the ballet of the French Opera House in New Orleans. Okay. Her relationship with her mother not as good. All right. Uh, Ada wrote her sister describing how much her mother disliked her. Okay. It's a cool letter. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, apparently, her mother was jealous. It's of also all... that was like therapy back then. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, right. Well, hopefully, I hear from her someday. Until then, I'll just live in the darkness. <laughs> That'll be fine. Apparently, her mother was jealous of all the attention Campbell gave to Ada. Oh my God. So... That is. That to me is the worst situation too. Yeah. 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 Where like a kid is just like, but I was just trying to be cool. And it's like, I, shut up. I just wanted a dad. You're not my daughter, <laughs> and you're not my daughter either. <laughs> The guy who doesn't like her, the mother is jealous of. No, he does like her. Oh, right. Sorry, yeah. I invented that part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and now it's like talking to my mom. <laughs> uh, uh, so there to prod me back. Nope. Yeah, you made that up, sir. Oh, did I? Oh, right. All oh, right. right. Uh, so in turn, she's not treating her own daughter well, and Ada is dreaming of better life. And then her stepdaughter die, her stepfather dies in uh, 1852. She's okay. 13. Okay. So she's crushed. She's totally destroyed. She had relied on his encouragement and his support. Some and people said that, that he was kind of an absent father to her. Yeah, I had heard that. Um, so just, I heard an improv guy say that. So just so you know, there's yeah. a couple camps. Okay, well, I mean, the, one's real and then one's just something, Some was, someone was riffing. Not, I don't think we need to get facts involved like in this argument about whether or not this guy was good. Let's keep okay. going, but... Uh, no. uh, so the family's know. destitute. Um, Ada has to work as a language tutor. She says, like, I can't, if I could just get my next poem published. <laughs> Now she's a little uh she's a little uh, ahead of the times. She kept a diary and she wrote in it quote she's seventeen at this point. The wom the wom woman of today is not a slave but free. So she's saying like right. you know, time to take off the chains and be be aggressive and get out there and Yeah. yeah. So like we shouldn't right. put up with this shit. Right. Uh, obviously not a prevailing attitude at the time, especially for her 17-year-old. Right, yeah. Her mother uh, didn't take long to remarry, this time to a man who actually made improper advances toward Ada and her sister, Ugh. and finally Ada couldn't take anymore, and she left home. Oh, my God. That's just... Good times. You really want to vet these step five? I mean, well, they're... Yeah. If you marry three, one's going to do it. Yeah, you got to dud. Yeah, the odds you're always are... going to find a shemp. Uh, so she hooks up with a local troupe of entertainers. Sure. In October 1853, an Austrian noble, mm -hmm. Baron Frederick von Oberstadt, very asked, excited for this. Well, okay, so this man comes in on a chandelier, obviously. <laughs> Edda, holding his uh, the leash of his tiger. Yeah, <laughs> what do you think, huh? Uh, he asked her to come with him to Havana. 
Uh-huh. Sure. Uh, Listen, Ada had if, two- <laughs> if an Austrian baron with a tiger asks you to go anywhere, you, you go. Gotta, yeah, you 100%. Go. Uh, she had tutored his daughter. That's how he... That's how he knew her. Okay. In Havana, she was a- apparently... So she says yes, obviously. Yeah. She's like, yeah, for sure. Uh, she was apparently his mistress in Havana. Okay. And she performed for the well-off. Uh, she danced. The audiences loved her. Uh, she says she was called Queen of the Plaza while she was there. Is that... Okay. Now, an, a- yeah. an actor, Horace Keene, wrote, quote, scarcely 16... So the age, obviously, I'm sure. off. But scarcely 16, she overwhelmed the audience with her charm and talent. Her tiny frame, crisp black curls, and dark sparkling eyes made her a beauty unlike any that have entertained her before. Is it any here before? Is it any wonder Havana is bewitched by her? What is she doing at the show? She's, she's just da- kind of like she's dancing. dancing. And... Yeah, she's dancing. It's a she's a ballet dancer. She's dancing. So she's dancing. Okay, she and must be she's, really good. And she's smoking. She's really attractive. She's, she's, and she's smoking doing ballet. Hot. Yeah, right. So they're like, "Wow, I didn't know I love dance." <laughs> I don't think you do, pal. <laughs> I don't think it's dance. I love the way the breasts move. I love the ballet. <laughs> oh, look at the bottom. Um, Could she stop moving so much and just stand? Is there a dance called jiggling? Please. So uh, now this uh, at this point in her life, there's different versions of what happened. So another uh, version, the so the the Baron bailed on her. Sure, and this is on Encyclopedia.com. She some believe she then survived as a sex worker to get by for a little while. Okay, and then she got back to the U.S. in 1856. Wow. Okay. Uh, fucking barons. A fucking baron. I would right? just you never want to put your fate in a baron's ever, hands ever ever. If a dude has a tiger on a leash, you're out. It's hard, though. It is. I mean, I just, I, I would even, even knowing that I'll be destitute and doing sex work, I'd still be like, it's, I mean, Maybe. there's a tiger, that's a baron. Yeah, it's pretty good. There's a lot of good, there's a lot of good. Yeah. It's going to be good sexing. No, well, that's not necessarily where I was. Barons going. all. I'm more into the fuck tiger. Like rhinos. Yeah. As you know. What? Yeah. I, was, I spent some time. Never mind. After uh, after he bails on her, right, she does that. And then she gets back to the U.S. and her fellow entertainers tell her she she goes back to you know her troupe or whatever. Right. And they tell her she can make money as an actress. Okay. Um, so she quits dancing in the ballet and goes all for acting. She's all in. Okay. Um, difficult because always she's, a good call, by the way. Yeah, oh yeah, acting is when a people sure are like, thing. I'm going to narrow it down to acting. You're like, that's yeah, going to yeah. be fruitful. Yeah, no, you should learn lands- landscaping also. Mm, yep. Uh, it was so it's difficult because she is mixed race. Sure. The theater owners who knew of her background refused to hire. Her. What year are we in? Sorry, roughly. We're in the 1850s. Oh Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, so this is probably where all the stories of her childhood came from. She uses them in the moment to, you know, finagle any situation. Right. right? Okay. Interesting. But it also makes her seem mysterious, and that helps her get work. <laughs> so it's all, it's a whole thing. Whatever, it's just... So the entertainment business has always just been absurdly dumb. Just fucking dumb as shit. Well, now that we don't know your history, we're interested in working with you. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's weird that you lied to us. We like it. So she makes her way to Liberty, Texas, where she worked as an actress, which... Mm-hmm. I mean, this was just when they just had theaters all over the place because there was nothing else to do. Right. So uh, she would give public readings of Shakespeare. She also wrote newspaper articles and she wrote poems and she taught dance classes. But it was a lot. So she decided she needed a wealthy husband who could support her acting career. So she's looking for a sugar daddy. Sure. So she put an ad in Liberty Gazette seeking a husband. Okay, that's a crazy what? ad to see. I mean, it's a weird... Would you look at that? I think I'm going to marry this girl. <laughs> <laughs> so the Here ad... I was just looking for a refrigerator. I think I found my wife. <laughs> look at this. She sounds wonderful. Hello, I'm interested in your ad about getting married to you. I understand you're young. Tell me is... what you are and what you look like and who what you like. I am a woman. I'm ready to sign anything. I have... I don't need to hear any more details. I have hair. I like what I'm hearing. Don't talk past the clothes, though. And eyes. You don't. I, listen, enough. I'm waiting for some red flags. You have hair, eyes, and are a woman? E gads. All, my... all I've got is this cooling box that I'm buying from the paper. I have all my parts. Uh, lady, enough. There's probably some things I should tell you. 
Like I don't have a bottom half. <laughs> okay. And uh, or uh, I'm not, I'm more of I'm not. I am more of a animal man than a man. Okay. I'm what they call a, a humanzy. Oh. Half chimp, half human. Oh. Now. Are you rich? Yeah, I have a lot. Okay. Great. This is a good match. Mm. My wife. <laughs> My husband. Became weird looking. <laughs> well, look at all your hair. Yeah, it's everywhere. <laughs> Rush. This is Was the... that common? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, she she definitely does stuff that is not common, so yeah. I don't know. Okay. I tried to figure it out, she but I couldn't. She basically started The Bachelorette. I mean, it seems like, yeah, she, yeah, I mean, she did. She started all that shit, I guess. Let's okay. say that. Let's say she's the first. I'll do that on this episode. Okay. Uh, this is November 12th, 1855. This appeared. Uh, sorry, November 23rd. Quote, I'm young and free, the pride of girls with hazel eyes and nut brown curls. They say I'm not void of beauty. I love my friends and respect my duty. I've had many full uh, boo ideal Beau ideal, yet never, never found one real. There must be one I know somewhere in all this circumambient air. And I should. There's ads going on a lot. By the way, when you're talking about the air, it's like. Yeah. It, you, She's this, just this rhyming. This costs you per letter. She's just trying to rhyme really hard. Right. Okay. And I should dearly love to see him. Now what if you should chance to be him? So this dude reads it. Just one? Well, I'm sure a lot did. Yeah, I would imagine there were... I'm sure they printed her address, too, knowing how the papers <laughs> work like that. So there's just a bunch of horny weirdos like, I'm in! I got no questions! So this traveling well-off uh, musical musician and conductor reads the ad. Isaac, Alexander Isaacs Menken. Uh, he's on tour in Texas. Sort of on tour. His dad was a dry goods manufacturer, and Alexander was probably a traveling salesman telling people he was a musician. So, a lot of, I mean, I guess every, I, we still you lie could. a tremendous amount. But, if, right, you could okay, get away with it. Think about the times in your life where it, things were going shitty and you could have just gone somewhere else and lied. Yeah, wait, yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I'm sure tons of people are doing it. It's, just, it's very appealing to just think yeah. that you could walk into a town and just be like, I'm a doctor. Yeah. So this oh. is where I'll see patients. I need my gallbladder uh, out. Yeah, great. Jesus. <laughs> what have I done? What have I done? Get me the saw uh -huh. and some lemon juice. Well, whole lemons. Okay, here we go. Put the lemons inside him like I'm supposed to. Oh, my God. <laughs> then you go to another town. I'm an accountant. <laughs> that way I don't have to put lemons in a guy. Uh, so either way, he reads her poem slash ad in the paper, and he writes to her, and then they meet in person, and instant connection. I mean, yeah. Instant connection. It's, but it's going to be an instant connection. Yeah. When one person is putting an ad in the paper, and the other person's like, then I'll marry her. <laughs> Like, it's two people who are, like, looking for this situation, you know? <laughs> they also are both performers. Sure. They're both ambitious. Well, sort of. He's a dry goods salesman. Well, okay. So they quickly got married in Galveston. Okay. Right after the wedding, Ada started working uh, in supporting roles at the Liberty Shakespeare Theater. Uh, her name is now Ada Isaacs Menken. Okay. And that'll be her name for good. She's keeping that one. Sure. Then, as Alexander backed her, she started landing lead roles at the Crescent Dramatic Association of New Orleans. An encyclopedia.com article, quote, Hardly a great actress, the pretty, somewhat exotic-looking young woman provided a striking physical presence on stage. Audiences received her well. So, so Not hardly, a good actress, but hot. Hot. So... I read a couple so different. This is when being in the entertainment business and your uh, looks, where it was like, wow. Imagine. Imagine a time when you're just judged upon your appearance. I can't imagine it. Mm. Uh, but th that's what this strange was like. Strange to then. envision. People didn't care as much about the acting as the looks. It's very back strange. Then. Very weird. Just feels like the entertainment would be diminishing returns eventually. Interesting. Yeah, you'd think so. At some point. Yeah. Unrelatable. Right. When every main character has it's to have a super six hot. pack. And just, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just every single time. Is this place named Fucktown? Yeah. Because I want to fuck everybody. Uh, yeah. I mean, what, that really, that should be, that would be a great movie. 
like hot town yeah. and you just put like an ugly guy like a, not even ugly a regular, <laughs> a regular guy a, well, yeah a human yeah. a human person there just living amongst these tens who are just it's just it is absurd yeah uh. <laughs> like when Zach Efron played <laughs> Oh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Ted Bundy. Oh yeah. It oh, was Jesus like, Christ. really? This is seriously. Do is that right? I feel like we're not like I. I get it. He really yeah. wants to be a good actor, and yeah. God bless him. Come on, but this is not uh, no. why you're here. No. Or the best one was when <laughs> this is the best one was when Ashton Kutcher played Steve Jobs when Jobs oh. just died and then they were like you were like thinking like well at some point they'll make a movie about him and we'll find it he's like I finished mine and everyone's like what no you're not the person no and he's like I did it first everyone's like no 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 dude we don't want you to be doing it and he's like yeah I did it I'm Steve Jobs and then I'm not kidding I don't remember the last time I saw a movie as high as I saw Jobs in the theater. <laughs> Very quickly, I was high as shit watching Jobs in the Theater with three of my buddies, and we were just laughing. I mean, we were genuinely laughing. Like, yeah. we, like, it was like we were there seeing a different movie. And when it couldn't get more absurd, this one dude walks into a room and is like, Hello, Gareth? And we were like, What the fuck is going on? <laughs> okay, so yes. All right. So she's, okay, so the so paper th review is basically like, She's not, not a good actress, but wow, did people like watching her. Yeah, Yowza. That's, right. uh, if there, there are some people like, she was the best actress of her time, but right. like, this is the reality okay, that more I of found. This. Yeah, there's okay. more of this. Uh, so Alexander just worships her. She's into him too. They're really into each other. Sure. Uh, she uh, converts to Judaism, or she already was. I I, I found love these, this uh, again. These I ones. found different versions of where she learned Hebrew as a child, and other ones sure. where she didn't. So I feel like she converted here. Okay. Um. She uh. So when she wasn't acting in a play, then she was writing articles in a paper called Israelite. Wow, so she went... She went full on. Like now, she that's went, not like... She went into the politics. That's not two words, right? It's not like, we don't get into the super dark politics. <laughs> it's uh, Israelite. For those of you who don't like all that... You want to read Israel heavy. No. That is You're not ready so for that. Intense. Do die at Israel. It's an unbelievable magazine. Um... Yeah, so she got into it. She also wrote. She was also writing poems. So sure. in the Israelite articles, she called on the Jewish people to defend themselves and to prepare for the return to Zion. She wrote an essay on I, Jewish men being allowed to sit in Britain's parliament. It's a little. S scholars started quoting her articles in their she, lectures. She. It seems a little like it's you know a what little I mean? fast for the first person in the room to just be like, "Now we go to Zion." Yeah. Like, hey, 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 hey. And you listen to one of these meetings before you No, oh, we're man. going. I am now a Jew. Let us attack. <laughs> hey, 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 pump the brakes over there a little bit, huh? Relax. We have been through too much, lady. <laughs> you just started. Lady. You ju just yesterday. I will not be silenced like my people have been for <laughs> centuries. Uh, so she wants more success, and so they move to New York. Okay. Uh, she makes her stage debut there in March 1859. She had a small part, but she wins over audiences. Okay. She got more and more roles. Sometimes plays close quickly and she'd have a dry spell. Right. Alexander does not want to be in New York. Okay. He... You didn't put that in your ad. <laughs> I thought I knew you. You have to follow the ad. <laughs> Willing to convert was what got me here. That's it. Open to conversion. So he wants to go back to his hometown, which is Cincinnati. Ada wants to be a, who, you never hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you miss the bright lights of Cincinnati? No. Sin City, baby? No, no, it's definitely Sin not Sin City. Yeah, that's why they no. call it Sin no, City, they baby. they do not at all. They call it Sin Cincinnati. Sin City. It's called Cincinnati. Sin City, baby. It's just. What can't happen in Cincinnati? Everything's Every... open till 8.30. Cincinnati, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Uh, Can I have a beer? Uh, sure. Or wait, no. I don't know. You know better than me. No. Yes? Yes. No, you can't. Okay. Yeah, sorry. They, <laughs> there's no alcohol in Sin City. No, but you said it's Sin City, so it I is would Sin like City. a beer. You can do anything you want. It's. I know it's a 10, but I would like a beer. It's too late. Drink from that fountain. Sin City. That's water. We should go to bed. Sin it's, City. It's 8.15. Shh, shh, shh. The neighbors. Sin City. Think of the neighbors. This Anything is terrible. 
Let's do a puzzle with eye I'm, contact only. Oh God, Sin I'm, City. I'm so fucking bored. Yeah. Sin City. It's not Sin City. Sin City. Don't do a song. Sin City, baby, oh, take God, a I'm, ride. I'm dancing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's a that's gonna be a problem, right? Alexander actually wants the classic stay-at-home wife. Sure. He wants her to make the meals. I like that he's bringing her. up now. Like he's in yeah, New York, yeah, yeah. he's acting, and he's like, you know, I'd rather if you weren't you now. <laughs> How is this not a phase? Like, yeah. Now that you have a man. Seems like you're really trying to do stuff, which I'm not loving. Yeah, he wants her to just stay home, have kids, make the meals, you know, yeah. the usual. You're I, a baby machine. Yeah. Yes, crank out the babies and make the meatloaf. Ada was not remotely interested in being a housewife, and that's why she'd placed the ad in the first place for right. someone to take care of her while she acts. In I'm surprised that they didn't really get to know each other super well through her. <laughs> I mean, I found some people that said they she got married. They got married the next day. So yeah, I mean, seems nothing um, crazy there. In an article in Liberty Gazette, Ada wrote that, quote, women should believe there are other missions in the world for them besides that of wife and mother. Put that paper down, Diane. What are I, you reading? Well, she clearly wrote it to Alexander, but it publicly. It's great, though. <laughs> yeah. She's trolling him. Things took a turn for the worse when Alexander lost all of his money in a bad real estate investment, and now he was living off of Ada's theater income. You know, New York ain't that bad, <laughs> babe. <laughs> <laughs> to make him feel better, she named him as her manager. Okay. Wow. Okay. Now, audiences fucking love her. Okay. Uh, and that meant men adoring her. Sure. They would crowd around the uh, stage door holding flowers to give her. Okay. Wow. And she also started becoming more and more flirtatious. Okay. Alexander got very jealous. As your manager, we should leave. <laughs> Don't touch his hand. Stop making out with that man. As your manager. I'm your manager. And then Ada started wearing pants. Uh, the, uh, I can't do this again, Dave. <laughs> I, 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 I don't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I just, I, I already had to do this once. I don't want to. I, it's okay that she wore pants. Isn't we really it? need to. Well, it upset Alexander. <laughs> now, now you're wearing pants. And then she started... You've changed! And then she started smoking in public. So you're smoking, you're wearing pants. When does it end, Ada? What next? Are you going to grow a dick? Uh, <laughs> wearing pants and smoking. Men smoked in public, but it was unheard of for a woman to do. She wrote in her diary, quote... I, I, I literally can't process it. I know, it's crazy. Even with the standards as they were, yeah. as whacked out as all that stuff was... I still, there are elements of it where I'm like, I just can't, I don't, like, I don't know how it happened. Yeah. How did they get to the point, I, even pants, like, I I don't get it, but I'm like, okay, <laughs> they weren't wearing, but smoking. I know. In I public. Know. Yeah. While men are smoking, being like, what are you doing, lady? You're a woman! <laughs> <laughs> just comfortably walking around like, what the fuck is she doing? The whole thing's gonna fall apart if you start smoking. This is not a man in pants, but a lady. Uh, so she wrote in her diary, quote, I have told him I will leave him if he does not stop badgering me with his sermons on cigarettes. I do not criticize him for smoking. I will not submit to the dictation of any man. Yeah, which, I mean, uh, yes, which I think. Right, correct, <laughs> yes. Correct. But yes. he, I bet you what he's doing is he knows it's ending. He's got to. So he's doing this thing where he's trying to be over controlling. But I no, I also think like he at this time, you meet a woman like this, right? She's an actress, she's doing yeah. things, but you think in your head, well, all she really wants is to be married and then she'll do what she's right. supposed to do, which is just have babies and stay home. Right. Like, and then I think they she's all getting further and further away. Yeah, they all her, think right? that way, and right. then he marries her and she's not doing that. And he's right. like, Wait, no, 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 no. I I am man. I gave you me. You now will. you make my baby. We can't both be wearing pants. <laughs> Are you crazy? Uh, so he took, he couldn't take it anymore, and they separated in July. Okay. Now, she was getting poems published in the Clipper uh, newspaper for five bucks each. 
And one day she's at the paper's offices and she meets California boxer Johnny Benicia Boy Heenan. Hey, Johnny Benicia Boy Heenan. He, he's What's from a Benicia, Benicia Boy? He's from Benicia. What's Benicia? Benicia is a city in, in uh, California. Okay. That at one time for like six months was the uh, capital of California before everybody was like, oh God, this is Benicia. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Benita. <laughs> Uh, he's six two and over two hundred pounds. He has a big black mustache. He's very famous. He's okay. a famous boxer. Right. Johnny uh, <clears throat> proposed while asking her to abandon acting and writing to concentrate on being a wife and a mother. That's a very so he's like, look, I will proposal. marry. I will marry you if you give it's up. It's not your a proposal dreams. for marriage as much as a contract betwixt us. <laughs> it's the best thing to be like, give darling, up everything you love, darling. You have changed me for the better yeah, in thank every way. You. I, yeah, I agree. I, I love you so much. You're wonderful. I'm uh, down on one knee for a reason. Yeah. What? Oh, my God. Will you make me the happiest man in the world <laughs> and give up your career <laughs> and stop smoking in public and wearing uh, pants uh, and acquiesce to the system in the world that I deem appropriate and oh. the fit into my life completely and have... None of your own uh, thoughts uh, or uh, artistic, creative uh, developments. Hold on, hold this on. Is ba- long. Oh, please. This is uh, long. Yeah, because long. I mean all of it. Usually people I mean just all say, of it. I mean all of you... it. You will wait on me hand and foot. Okay. Whatever I want will be brought to me on a tray. That's really... I will eat on the tray mainly. But if I don't want to eat on the tray and I'd rather you get down and I eat off your back, that's also it's, a possibility. This is too... Every day I look into your eyes, I know there's something special about you. Oh. And it's your, it's your malleability. You're so open to change, um, which is why the idea that if potentially you don't get to go in every room in the house we share, that's not going to strike you as crazy. So I take your hand. What? I take your hand. Shut up. No, <laughs> I'm serious. Shut up. You're saying I take things. your hand and I Ow. ask you, I ask you, Ow. as I put the ring on, Ow. will Ow. you marry me? Fuck. Just say yes. And it's legally binding. No. Also, you'll make my clothes. Oh, so I get massages whenever. Oh, and uh, you have to pee standing up. I don't want any of this toilet seat stop bullshit either. my hand. Say yes. Oh, oh, I love you, baby. She oh. said yes. We're doing it. Oh, my Lord. I got a maid. A oh, wife, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but somehow she agrees. But she just went through this. I know. She's like, with you, you she have a mustache. Have, it's she different. She must have really been into him. Sure, I guess. I don't but, know. Yeah, all right. But they got married secretly on September 3rd, 1859. It didn't take long for the secret to get out. Sure. Now, Johnny taught Ada to box on their honeymoon. Great. Good. But that's, not in pants. That's the best. <laughs> Put on your dress. We're going boxing. Come on. Uh, he was a drinker and uh, a carouser. This is going to be good. This is going to be good. Uh, he I like not, where this is headed. He did not spend much time with his wife. Oh, it's, mm, weird. Uh, there were rumors of abuse, uh-huh. and they were very prevalent at the time, but we have no proof, but I'm assuming if there were rumors, he's a boxer. Yeah. Uh, it's true. I Look, I think you're right. Innocent until proven guilty. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'm, this I'm, one we're going I'm ready. With. I'm yeah. ready. Um, uh, she said he was jealous of the adoration from her fans and that she made more money than him. And then Alexander showed up in New York and announced that he and Ada weren't divorced yet. This, I mean, I, I've moved on from this guy. <laughs> she said she thought he had divorced her, but he hadn't. I didn't. I couldn't afford it. <laughs> Can I buy thirty dollars? But he now begins. To, he now begins divorce proceedings. But you know, the public is like, it's a scandal. Right? right. How dare she? Uh, Johnny, meanwhile, hops on. When he learns this, he hops on a ship and goes to London to fight in the World Heavyweight Championship against uh, champ Tom Sayers. Okay. So he just bails. He's like, fuck this shit. Mm -hmm. Um, The fight lasted 37 rounds. Jesus Christ. What? (laughs) Till one man died of natural causes. (laughs) Johnny uh, was beating him well, and the promoters were so concerned he was going to kill Sayers that they stopped the fight and called it a draw. At 37 rounds? That's right. So they were just like watching an execution, and they're like, yeah, let's call it. We're good. This man's out of blood. <laughs> but he still made a lot of money from the fight. He had also left. He the left... 50 count back then didn't help anything <laughs> no, either. No, it didn't at all. 34! <laughs> 35! 36! <laughs> Is this my eye? 44! Is this my eye? 47! He's up! He's up! He's ready to go! All right. I, look alive. I, smell I, this. Smell this. There you go, oh. buddy. Oh, what is that shit? Oh, boy, he's got his brains bashed is again. Is that manure? One. Oh, God. Two. <laughs> uh, 
so remember, he had left Ada to deal with the scandal. Uh-huh. Uh, she was also pregnant. Okay, good, 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 good. Uh, while he was gone, she gave birth to their son, who died soon after. Expected. By the way, which is, I mean, not the death part, but that is what he wanted. Like, she was doing what he had asked. That is true. So, Except hey. for the big, still being married part. Yeah, but I mean, I guess, yeah, that is a yeah. big part. But and she didn't a, know. He's a drunk. Yeah, right, yeah. He's also been hit in the head a bunch of times. I, yeah, right. Uh, when Johnny came back uh, to New York in July, he'd have no, he had nothing to do with her. Okay. Uh, some, said, some people said she only married him to increase her fame. Okay. Uh, and then Ada divorced John and... Right after that, her mother died. So she's super depressed. She's right. had a fucking run of luck. That's yeah. just terrible. And Alexander, that one's over. They're too. divorced too. Okay, yeah, they right. finally that finally wrapped right. up. It's all wrapped up. Yeah, you're like I got to divorce him, then I'll divorce you. So in August 1860, Ada was at the lowest point in her life and her career. The New York Sunday Mercury published her despair poems. Wow. So it's like TikTok. Yeah, right. Where girls just go on there and. and Show videos of them crying. Or, I mean, or just Twitter, where someone will be like, really can't bother with today. And you're like, eh. Finn, Finn shows me videos all the time. It's like, oh, look, this girl just broke up with her boyfriend, and they, they do crying videos. No, I know. There's it's really, stop that. It's, I mean, I don't even think it's just, I mean, I've definitely seen a lot of, there's a, the filming yourself for sympathy is like a thing where I'm like, it actually make it's gutting because it's like, oh my God, you're not going to get the not only no. the attention you want but like it's not you're not gonna oh no the fin the, you will regret this to some extent it shows me the comments and they're like oh you're so emo and i'm just like jesus christ man this the internet is not the place to go to look for sympathy <laughs> no uh so comment section especially right so she's doing comment despair. section is what makes you do the crying video that's right uh so she does her despair poems and a critic called them, quote, more self-revealing than those which any other female American poet had ever dared to publish. Okay. She couldn't bring herself to work until early 1861. Oliver Troubles, though, had only increased her fame. I thought that was going to be a character, Oliver Troubles. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hello, he I'm Oliver comes, Troubles. Just comes out of a cloud of smoke. I heard you've got some trouble. Well, you've called Oliver Trouble. Now all of your trouble's over. You're probably not going to want me around. Which would you rather? Your trouble be over or Oliver be your trouble? <laughs> the Artful Dodger. Um, so, right. So, but it increases her fame, right? So she realizes that mm -hmm. uh, and then she vows to quote never again be a victim or sacrifice anything for the male dominated society well huh. bully yeah good luck with that grumble, pants. Grumble, grumble 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 okay pants woman grumble grumble she returns to the stage in Mazeppa oh I love that show and in that she would play a boy okay the final scene in this play uh -huh. the boy is stripped of his clothes Lashed on the back of a horse, ridden up to cliffs, and this then disappears a, how, in the clouds. How, how big is this stage? Well, they would build this. We're doing it in Montana. <laughs> they would build a staircase, and the horse would go up the staircase. That poor horse. I can only imagine oh, yeah. the oh, yeah. abysmal treatment. I'm a theater horse. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'll be doing what? I'm actually two men named Dan. Do I not have lines? Do I just go up these fucking stairs? What do you mean I can't wear pants? <laughs> I'm a horse. Usually the production would put a dummy on an old horse and and it would walk up the stairs. Okay. But Ada and her manager had another idea. Okay. She would ride the horse. Up the stairs, on the stairs. So stage. they'd put her on a horse. Oh, boy. Dressed, right? Remember the boy's topless. Yeah, she's a boy. Topless. Right. Oh, he's topless. Yeah, they take out, they strip him and then they lash him. I mean, oh, he's essentially naked. But yeah, okay. So, Okay. Dressed in skin-colored tights so she would appear naked. Okay. Since she was playing a boy, it wasn't the same as if she was portraying a naked woman. Right. Because naked women couldn't appear on the stage. But since she was a boy, then that gave it a pass somehow. I love these, again, these <laughs> The arbitrary... dumbest thing ever? Well, it's just like with the culture of the men back then, their dumb rules, like, get, oh. they're like, you're not allowed to see a naked woman? And they're like, wait, wait, hold, uh, hold on. It feels like we went a little far. No, consistency is what we're preaching here. Yeah, I'm just saying, though, like, maybe it's equal with nudity. Of course it can't be. That's crazy. You can't have a nude woman. We'll allow men to only be nude. Yeah, but I feel like let's have nobody be nude. What are you talking about? 
That's insane. Of course a man can be nude. So we're only allowing dicks to be seen. All right. Now that's how you create a society that's perfect for our vision. <laughs> it, it Look, there's zero... It makes zero sense. Well, if she's dressed as a man, as a woman, and she's naked as a man, that we can do. <laughs> That's legal. That's exactly. That's legal. That's exactly what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> so it opens on July third, eighteen sixty one, in Albany. It's a packed house. She cut her hair short like a boy. Sure. The audience couldn't tell if she was naked or not, but they were shocked and excited as she rode through the crowd. So she must have taken stares through the crowd at the end. <sighs> Jesus. She got crazy standing ovations every night. Okay. And overnight, she became a huge name. Wow. And then the play opens on Broadway. This was the year the Civil War broke out, and she was like a bright spot in, in this Civil dark, War. nightmarish time. Sure. The New York Post, quote, she is so lovely that she numbs the mind and the senses real. I mean, is this a story about how the Post has changed? (laughs) (laughs) I give the show four bonus. Yeah, I mean, honestly. I mean, it's just a dude going, fuck, she is hot. What was the play about? She's hot. It's a new one. Did you hear me? He's I don't know what the play is about. She's fucking hot. What's the play about? The play's about 90 minutes. <laughs> With a great ending. New Yorkers packed the theater. She was known as, quote, the naked lady. You know, it, it felt for a minute like there was some real maybe change, like like something had mm-hmm. changed, you know? Like, it was like, wow, she's finally Mm-mm. this human but it's like she's not a human she's the naked lady <laughs> like the naked cowboy in times square it's like you're like him but on a horse yeah yeah okay victor hippard of the new york sentinel uh he's a critic he wrote quote she glosses my face with laughter and tears she is the aphrodite of a male world the male world has waited for imagine she is a rare beauty perched upon one of heaven's high hills of light i just like Go. I've seen a naked woman, gentlemen. His wife reading that. Did you write this? <laughs> Let's just, just. I'm gonna close my eyes and fuck you. Uh, <laughs> Put this article on your face. <laughs> it's amazing to be like. It's, this is so embarrassing for men. Like they just losing their fucking minds. And writing like there's a publisher who's like, we'll go with it. Front page. <laughs> Let me tell you about a boner I experienced. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, soon, Ada... And pay, some people told me she was on a horse, but I hadn't noticed. <laughs> soon, Ada was making $500 a week. Okay. Which is a shitload. She uh, buys a big house, uh, which became a center for New York intellectuals. So now all of the writers and the actors and all of the, you know... It's one of... Right. It's a social... It's like a she's the, place for people of the time. Yes. Right. The editor of the Mercury said, quote, she could discourse fluently on matters pertaining to literature as well as the sciences and the latest news of the world. I don't want you to freak out, but behind this woman is actually some conversation that you enjoy. <laughs> I've discovered woman can talk. This lady not like others. She have thoughts that we like to digest. Make sense? She know what moon is. She know moon. We like moon. We like her. She became good friends with Walt Whitman and uh, Fitz James O'Brien. So the play goes on tour. Sometimes she would make, uh, sometimes she would get cat calls because she was from the South because the Civil War is on. Right. Like people would be like, you know, maybe she probably had an accent, I would assume. Wait, what do you mean cat call? Like like, saying just, it's derogatory shit. Oh, I thought, isn't cat call more like a salacious sort of? uh... I, I, you know what, this article said cat calls and I looked it up and it says sometimes it's just demeaning also. Ah. So yeah, but I think our version of it's different, but that's. Yeah, both, I mean, uh, both wildly appropriate (laughs) at any point to just shout at a stranger as they walk by you. You know, I mean... <laughs> I, hey, I like your tits, you southern monster! I like mean, that. the idea that they would just... Yeah, it is crazy. Yeah, cat calls are weird, but I've seen... I mean, New York construction workers are amazing at cat calls. They don't do it anymore, though. Yeah, of course they do. They do? Yeah, I believe so. I mean, yeah, I don't think they've stopped. I don't know. 
Maybe some. It's probably why the city is always under construction. Well done. Thank you. Uh, so when she made some pro secession remarks, she was almost arrested in Maryland. But this all increases ticket sales. Yeah. Because, and she's probably doing this with that in mind now because she's become very good at keeping herself constantly in the public eye. Right. She's, she's Kim Kardashian in a way. She right. knows she's, that anything she she's does. She's trending. Yes, anything she does. She uh, marries the editor of the Mercury, the one who said, oh, she, she understands sciences and, and mm. she can talk like right. a human. Right, okay, right. Um, Robert Henry Newell, they get uh, married. He had been convinced they would end up together after reading her poems and watching her acting. He said she had the keenest mind he had, quote, ever encountered in a member of her sex. It really didn't feel like it was going to get there. But oh, my God, you're so smart you're, for a woman. You are still perfect. For Sometimes I feel like I'm almost talking to a man. If I close my eyes, <laughs> sometimes I forget you're just beneath me. Uh, the owner of the opera house in San Francisco offered Ada fifteen hundred dollars a week for twelve weeks. Okay, that's thirty-two thousand dollars a week today. It's decent. Yeah, as uh, as we learned previously in a previous episode, San Francisco is theater crazy. Right. There are uh, lots of rich people, and then there's lots of wannabe miners. Uh, lots of dudes. Lot of dudes. Right. Men of the frontier uh, were already drooling over Ada, knowing about her. It's very strange. She's beautiful. She has an amazing body. She also uh, she also has come to understand the value of photography for publicity. Okay. So playbills with her picture on the front would appear in a town before she arrived. So oh right, she's advertising. She's right. showing the a uh, uh, picture of her. In her I mean, they're like little shorty shorts and like, you know, revealing tops. Right. And they'd be in every paper and they'd be placed in every theater. Right. So people see, oh, hot lady going to be here. Right. She's fucking smart. Nobody told me this was a play. <laughs> I uh. thought she was just going to stand there and not talk. Oh, shit. I guess we got to listen to her jabber, jabber, jabber. Uh. So they set sail. Her Excuse her me. When do you get naked? Pardon. <laughs> sorry. I'll sit down. Sorry. <laughs> so awkward. Why are you talking with clothes on? This is not what I ordered. Would it help if some of us men got naked? No. Okay. <laughs> no. One of us already has. <laughs> Frank. Sorry. Drop the gun. Yeah, I'll say. Can't find my belt. Okay. Frank. Can we get the house lights up? No. No. Oh. no. Dropped a bunch of no change. No house lights. Dropped a lot of change. Is there a bag I could have? Maybe no. Is, what did they think when they put on marathon runners? The foil? Just, could you leave? I mean, I'd love to get my pants. Oh, this is a pickle. <laughs> I'm in the situation. No. Oh, boy. LOL. Look at everyone looking at me. Sorry. You keep going. I'll find them. I'd love to get them. I, before <laughs> we start, I'd just love to get them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah sure. You uh, should not go outside. Well, let's let's start again. Okay, start over. Good. So they set sail for San Francisco on July thirteenth, eighteen sixty three. They go through the Panama jungle because <laughs> that's, that's there's no Panama San Francisco. There's no Panama Canal. So the way that you would do it is you would sail down to Panama and then cross the fucking fifty. Well, miles we have to go through the Panamanian jungle. Obviously, <laughs> we're headed to San Fran. You know how it is. The kids didn't make it. They were killed by jaguars. <laughs> so the trip really harmed their marriage, and it never really recovered. At some point, uh, he insisted Ada give up her stage career, telling Jesus. her she should read and write only poetry in her spare time, and she should focus on being a wife. I, I really feel like maybe dating for a little while would be a good idea. Like she's, a year, two years. She's going to make 32000 a fucking week in yeah. our money. And, and he's, he's like, like, you shouldn't do this. Write poetry. <sighs> By the time they arrived <laughs> in San Francisco, the theater owner had done a ton of PR. The entire run was sold out. Opening night. I mean, look, this is obviously isn't going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's time to give it up, hang it up. Lord, read the room. Man. Shouldn't you be cooking? Come on. Opening night, August 24th, 1863, San Francisco's elite packed McGuire's Opera House. 
Ladies are wearing diamonds and furs. The the gentlemen had capes and silk and silk hats. I'm going as an X Man tonight. We're all going to see the naked woman. Uh, as an opening night such as the city had never seen, one thousand seats filled. It was rumored she played the part in the nude, so they think she's going to be totally nude. Oh, oh, okay, sorry. Okay, I thought you meant she had done it. Uh, the next day, critics claimed, quote, prudery is obsolete now. Wait, prudery? So they're into it. Yeah, they're like, they're that's like, it. That's she's it. Game over. Game over. There's Game no over. more prudes. Right. Oh, prudes I thought, are gone. I thought they, because it was rumored she was naked, they were like, well, it's disappointing. She's not fully no, nude. She's still, in right. their eyes, like, right. this basically is, nude. Yes, this is escalating. Uh, she got rave reviews. Taking on men's roles were very daring for the time, especially when you wore almost nothing. Right. Audiences just go bug fuck over the naked lady. Okay. She was also in other plays while there. She hung out with the best authors again. Like, she's again. Right. Right. In the mix. Because even though she's not a great actress, she's, I think writers are like, she's fucking taking the chance. She's doing something. It is very, there's, 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 there's like an artistic skew to it like she's a, a yeah. clear empowerment like thing where she's right. like it's okay so i'll fucking uh, i'll use my sexuality and right. look at you idiots yeah <laughs> right right, right. um well, and are the are the women equally into it of the time or I is it like find... half a room of men like stand up barbara come on show some respect that was unbelievable there's nobody better than her boy oh boy <laughs> can you imagine a woman doing something like that i know you couldn't darling come on stand for her. Look at her. She's amazing. God, do you think if I got two of you, I could trade it in? Oh, I know. I don't want to say that. I'm going to rush the stage. I'm getting a divorce. I can't handle you. <laughs> I couldn't find anything about the women's response, right. but there's a couple negative. There's a little bit of negative stuff, but right. I'm sure the women did not enjoy Love it for the going, time. Yeah. Well, I think going with your, if all the men are like losing their minds, you're like, all right, Frank. Yeah. So, Remember uh, what you got on the horse last night? <laughs> Yes, you've asked me a few times. That was definitely the best part. Honey, we're buying a horse! That was definitely the best part. What was your favorite part of the horse? Uh, the, uh, the, uh, hmm. Great, good. Mine was the lady on the horse. Oh. You know, some people say there was a show before the horse part. So, crazy. I didn't... We're not together anymore. Oh, man. <sighs> Such a good show. We should go again. No. Halloween, let's go as a... No, let's not. Let's, you go as her. No. And I'll go as the horse. No. <sighs> Remember when she was on the horse? No. Naked? No. At the show? No. Was that last night or two nights ago? It was like an eternity. Wow. That's all I think about. I know. <sighs> a toast to that time she was no. on the horse. No. And she was totally naked. The best part of everyone's life. Cheers. Ding. Oh, man. Hmm. That's good. All right. I'm going to go to bed and hope I dream about it. Have a good night, honey. I sleep with you in a bed. Remember she's on the horse? Or she's on the naked? No, no. She don't remember. Oh, I hate my wife. Oh, I wish I was with her. Oh, it happened again, baby. Whoo, that awful nightmare. Oh, God. Should we go to the show? No. Uh, if only they did them during the day. Remember that when she got on that horse? Oh, my God. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna turn in. I've been up for an hour. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the people are going fucking crazy for it. Um, there are a lot of rumors that she's having affairs with millionaires in the city. Okay, which she wrote about them in her diary. Okay, so rumors may be true. Yeah, uh, none of this helped her third marriage, which fell apart, and sure. Newell returned to New York City. Right. <sighs> Ada Ada now publicly acknowledged she was not good at picking husbands, but the marriages had given her a new view of the role of women. Quote, a man discovered America, but a woman equipped the voyage. So everywhere, a man executes the performance, but woman trains the man. Will men ever learn to be grateful? Wow. I mean, aside from a man discovering America, it's pretty good. (laughs) The theater owner asked Ada to remove even more clothing. Hey, uh, we got some notes uh, from the union. Um... 
they was wondering if uh, maybe a nipple could pop out. Is that crazy? <laughs> I, 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 I say no, but I, we was just getting some notes from the uh, yeah. studio. Studio. Yeah. I know it's all sold out, but what if... Uh, what we if, was just uh, thinking maybe you show a little B-crack. Yeah, we, yeah, we just want to say maybe a little bit. Of, it's just nothing. If you don't want to, it's fine. We're just saying, you know, everybody loves the show, but some people are thinking, the one note is, could we see a little B-crack? More, more, Is it yeah. crazy to get a little B-crack in there? Like, we and like maybe a quarter areola. Which is, yeah. Yeah. Again, as the character. Yeah. As the, it's, all, it's all within it's within the character. We think this guy would show his B crack a little more. I think so. so it, as a boy, a boy, you want to see more nipple. We'll talk to Wardrobe about adjusting the B crack. I, ju I just want to ask you a question. Is 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 it a boy if we don't see the nipples? Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. The, that's, that's what the, we're all wondering. The, yeah. So uh, we'll yeah, leave yeah. you. Good show. Good, Good to show. talk. Good show. Maybe cut a little bee cracks. So. I'm going to go into the closet and just leave it a crack open. There we and go. And you go ahead and get dressed. So uh, he agrees to increase her salary, and she agrees to wear only a blouse and shorts that revealed most of her legs. Okay. It was incredibly scandalous for the time. People are now literally fighting to get tickets. <laughs> Jesus Christ. An organization known as the Reform Group complained, quote, her style belonged more to the wild old time of 49ers than to a respectable society where many days often pass without any murders at all. What are they even talking about? <laughs> well, so 49ers, it's 20 years before and everyone's like... Just batshit fucking crazy. Yeah, but this idea—it's all dudes. It's fighting and right. and they're, they're yeah. lawless. Sure. And they're saying this Let's, is what it was like then. Right. Okay. Right. There's a naked woman right. here, so clearly that's clearly. the same as murder. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but she's making tons of money. The theater's making money. The crowds are fucking loving it. So not no one gives a shit about the reform group. Right. <laughs> she became known as the frenzy of Frisco. Wow. And they adopted her as their favorite daughter. The St. Francis Hook and Ladder Company made her an honorary uh, honorary member. You're a ladder, officially. You're, you're a fireman. You're now a ladder. Uh, she was given a beautiful belt by them, and the entire brigade, including a it's brass a band, championship serenaded belt. her. Uh, All the did? firemen serenaded her. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just. Hey, we are, mm, we are embarrassing. Fire! <laughs> How embarrassing are we? Uh, so the Civil War's on. Uh, Ada hung a big Confederate flag across the wall in her hotel room. Great. Again, great. that's going to get... Great. It's going to get press. Right. right. Oh, right. During the day, she walked the streets dressed in a single yellow silk garment. What? Journalists were constantly writing about her. When writer Joaquin Miller came to her hotel room for an interview, she was lying upon a yellow rug wearing a yellow sheath. <laughs> okay. So she... I mean, really, at this point, is it she's just realized the power of manipulating media oh, on a level where she's like Neo in the Matrix. She she yes, she realizes how easy it is to be slightly sexual and men go fucking right, and insane. media goes insane. Yeah, they go insane. Right. She wrote, "quote I'm dressing like a sponge now." <laughs> <laughs> He wrote, quote, I doubt if any other woman in the world could wear a dress like that in the winds of San Francisco and not look ridiculous. But this one, this one, I tell you, she look woman. She look woman. And what's the Confederate flag? That's just, again, to just be controversial? Yes, 100%. Okay. Ada now headed east over land. She did shows Time to in, go through the jungle. She did shows in Virginia City. The Gold Hill News, quote, she has come. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> I mean, honestly. <laughs> woman here. She has come. She is decidedly a pretty woman. And judging her style, we supposed she does not care how she rides. She was on the front seats with her back turned to the horses. Oh well, fuck, it's madness, this woman. Oh, my God. She has no cares. <laughs> She, she, she has come like Jesus is yes. walking through parted clouds from yes. the sky. The woman who wears barely anything is here. I mean, that, I, that's why I just can't picture being married to one of the. It's like, oh, baby, in the place, finally, we get to see her. <laughs> 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 we're finally 
down again. I've been waiting for purpose. It just it wouldn't happen, but it became hug me, hug me, baby. Oh my god. Oh, I will kill someone to go see it. There's nothing matters more to me than this. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, it's really fucking insane. It's nuts. This reminds me a it's lot. It's like girl watching. It is exactly like yeah. girl watching. It's uh, this is. It's just except this person is like figuring out ways to kind of modulate. Yeah, it. she right. Girl watching that as assault. She was more of a yeah. That was like a, a that was a, she was a victim. Like right. that was crazy. Yeah. This is a woman using yeah using her. She understands what she's doing. Right. And fucking good for her. Like right. she's like right. These guys are yeah. I assume she thinks they're all idiots. Uh, my like, guess I, is now she can wear pants. Yeah. So and smoke in public. Hundreds are turned away at the door in Virginia City. People stood in the packed in the aisles. Uh, the male so miners annoying. couldn't believe what they were seeing. Encyclopedia.com quote: Estimates place the value of gifts and payments of silver and shares of stock at a hundred thousand or more. So they were just giving her shit. Wow. Although that could be exaggerated, but you know, also probably I, true. Yeah. When she left Virginia City, I got him under my teeth. <laughs> When she left Virginia City, miners gifted her a silver brick valued at $403.31. It was stamped Miss Ada Isaacs Menken from Friends of Virginia City, Nevada Territory. My kids ain't eating in a while, but I, we, me and the fellas put in a bunch, and we thought we'd get you this silver brick here. It, it, I, I wish... I, there's I no... Wish. Uh, well, we don't have food or, in it or nothing, but we don't we, need we, it. We, we don't not need anymore. it. Well, the scene in you up there I, in that I, I, outfit it made us say, you, man, am, you don't I, need food. I, I am nourished. I am nourished. We are I'm full. Nourished. We I'm are sorry, full. Truly, Physically, we are starving. Sorry, Physically, we are starving and our bones are whittled. But, uh, oh, my God. Uh, but we, we, uh, we, 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 are, we, are, we are just so happy. Oh. So as we, uh, some of us have actually died during the play I, because it took us so long to save up, but we wanted you to have this. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Sex brick. Yeah, so please, thank you so much. Sorry, sorry. I meant silver brick. Shut up, Dan. I said sex brick. Shut up, Dan. All right, well, t- we live in, we don't have homes. We sold them for this. We sold We'll see you later. Bye, mate. And bye, miss. Oh, You're... That was worth it. Oh, my God. She's so normal. I, I, must, I like she's sleeping so outside. She's so normal. Yeah, she's... Down to earth. I've never seen one before, wow. except my wife. But this one... So uh, they also named a mine after her and formed the Mencken Shaft and Tunnel Company. This here's the Ada Hole. Stock certificates had a picture of a naked lady bound to a galloping stallion. <laughs> it's a, 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 a homage to your, the time you was naked on a horse, which is something we just are unable to forget. <laughs> Woo. So when she got back to New York City, she was loaded. But the East Coast wasn't the West Coast during the war. Easterners were worn down by four years of fighting. They didn't want to go out to shows. So Ada got an offer to come to London, and off she went on April, in April 1864. Mazeppa and the Naked Lady opened on October 3rd. There had been a lot of discussion in London papers over whether or not audiences would like it, but I mentioned a Naked Lady, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they went apeshit. Okay, for sure. She received 12 curtain calls on opening night. That's uh, that, honest to God. That can't be. You, you, at what point, like after three, you're like, I'm not going out there again. Uh, they're, they're beating each other up. Fine, one more. That, that's it. I'm capping it at nine. Well, unfortunately, the man is strung up, and they said that they will take his life unless there's another curtain call. Oh, for God's sake. They don't even need the other cast members to come out anymore for the curtain call. <laughs> A critic, quote, the most popular of American actresses has conquered us. <laughs> Once again, the top writers became her friends. Poet Algernon uh, Charles Swinburne wrote the poem La Venice for her. She would next perform in the play Children of the Sun there, but ticket sales dropped off. Interesting. So after six weeks, she did Mazeppa again. <laughs> so she was like, I mean, obviously, like this is like she's typecast. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, they just want to see her in yeah. the tight outfit. Yeah, so she's... So she wants she, to... She tries act, yeah, just she acting, wants, acting, sure. and they're like, right. yeah, no. Right. Like, Man, something was different. It's not naked it enough. It was weird. Um, her marriage with Newell was officially over in 1865. They got it annulled, right? Annulled, that's correct. Uh, she she uh, went on an American tour again in 1866 and did well. 
And then she met and married James Paul Barkley. Jesus. Not much is known about him other than he was rich. Okay. The reason not much is known is because three days after the marriage, a pregnant Ada sailed off to Europe and never saw him again. Interesting. How did you get pregnant so fast? <laughs> We it, haven't even had sex. Uh, yeah. Bye. Oh, this is like Jesus. Bye. See you soon. I love you, baby. Well, she was just using him to cover for the pregnancy um, okay. so that she could say I'm married and oh, okay. have a kid. <laughs> she went to Paris where she had the baby. Okay. The son was named Louis Dudevant Victor Emmanuel Barkley. So she was like, well, I've been in Paris for a day. It's a French baby. <laughs> That's right. She wasn't there to perform Mazeppa, but the play The Pirates of the Savannah. Uh, audiences and critics loved it equally, sold out shows, and she was constantly in revealing clothes in the play. Right. Artists and writers once again formed her circle. And while there, she also had a very close relationship with novelist Adamine Aurore Luce Dupin, who went by the pseudonym George Sand. Cool. My last name would be Sand. Sand was the godmother to Ada's son. By the time the show closed, Ada was now one of the biggest celebrities in the global north. Wow. So she's now yeah. huge everywhere. Right. Newspapers and magazines wrote about every move she made. Rumors, whether true or false, just increased her fame. But it wasn't enough. She wanted more. She believed if she published her best poems, it would lead to true immortality. What? She wants... She wants to be forever known, and she oh, thinks if okay. she writes... No, that's not true immortality. Well, it is that's, to her, as an artist, right, I guess. Right, right. She wants her work to live on forever. Yes. She doesn't want to be like, I'm immortal. <laughs> I'm 500,000 years old. If you write good poems, you never die. Do you want to see the play again? <laughs> it is no. me, Ada. <laughs> old Ada. I'm Ada from the mountain. <laughs> Uh, so she starts working on her collection of poems called uh, In Felicia. Now, she's not the best actress. Her fame on the stage was, you know, from being naked mostly. Right. And the ability to keep her name in the papers constantly. Mm -hmm. But she is a good poet. Okay. Critics praised many of them, although the technique isn't great. Um, as she was waiting for the book to be published, she headed for London and opened Pirates there. But nobody cared. Hmm. Some said she was lacking energy. Uh, she probably was not well. She returned to pa Paris and began rehearsing a new play. It turns out that previously during a performance, the horse had ran too close to a flat on the stage and her leg was badly cut. Okay. On June 9th, she collapsed on stage. She spent the next month in bed and doctors had no idea what was wrong, but they told her she would make a full recovery. Okay. Good. On August 10th, she died. Ugh. She was 33. Holy shit. The cut had led to a cancerous, cancerous growth, and she had advanced tuberculosis. Wow. She was buried in a cemetery, but then later moved to a Jewish cemetery the next year. George's son, George Sand, had her son secretly adopted by wealthy parents, and no one knows who to this day. Wow. Eight days later, she died. Um, eight days after she died, her collection of poems in Felicia was published. It was dedicated to Charles Dickens, who believed she had the heart and brain of a great poet. Ada Menken's success in California theaters was not matched until films became popular. She was appreciated around the world, but never felt more loved by an audience as she was when she performed in California and Nevada. That's crazy. It's, it's also crazy. Like I was thinking of this with because I got bitten by a pig. And <laughs> on a farm, and I was like, "You can't just say that." Yeah, hey, I was bitten by a pig on a farm within the last eight days. Well, that's not and a normal thing for a human being to say. Shut up and let me tell you my story. That's relevant about it. when a pig bit my hand, <laughs> and burgundy blood poured from it. How many? How many puncture marks? Is it one? It's just this. Just one. one. It's this one. And blo blood's pouring out of your hand. Pouring out of my is hand. The pig apologizing. The pig is. The pig never was an attack. The pig was just trying to eat a lot, and I understand that. Um, but I was like, when I was at the rapid care, and you know, you're in the back, and like they, they're like, they want to do all this stuff, and I'm going, I don't need all this. And the guy's like, listen, if this hit your bone, 
I mean, it was just, it, it really dawned on me, like, how I was being the worst because I'm like, I don't need all the medical care. And it's like, no, you would die from cuts. Like, you yeah. would get cut and you would die. There would, before antibiotics, you would just be like, well, that's it. Your life's over. You cut it on this rusty thing. <laughs> like, that. your life's over. It's over. Um, but that is crazy. I mean, it, it is it is really weird how in order to kind of, I guess, sort of fool the men who are in charge, you almost have to, like, hack their rules, which yeah. she basically did. She did. She, like, figured out the way that it, you still were, it, you know, it, I mean, first of all, the idea that she's basically naked and people are like, at least it's not pants. Like, <laughs> right. it's very strange. It's, uh, yeah, it's the craziest. But So she kind of found this route in a way that she was able to kind of carve out you know, she manipulated she it to had her all, advantage. She had all the power. Yeah. Right? She, and she she hacks the minds of the men who are, like, the ones who are... I mean, essentially, it's like Pavlov's dogs. Like, the men are are so... Like, everyone, everything is... It's, it was sexually sexually repressed, right? Yeah. Every, every so the right. so no one can see this stuff except your your wife at home. Right. Like it it's like it's like there was a balloon and she just popped it and they right. all just fucking lost their right. minds. Like right. they could not believe what was happening. Right. But then again, also it's like then if she's wearing pants, then people are like, Well, that's okay to wear pants. Well then then that's the crazy part. Yeah, you're normal yeah. You, because you can do it she found that you can th she found a loophole, right? You could yeah. do it on stage. She was like, Oh, they're monkeys. They're totally monkeys. They are monkeys. <laughs> but if she walked around outside like that, yeah, they would be like, oh, oh. yeah, she had to do it under the guise but of this character. Is, yeah, right. It's it's so fucking. It's weird, but it's. I mean, Jesus Christ, still very much, you know, relevant and prevalent in, in many different ways today. Obviously, yeah. Um, wow. Uh, sources encyclopedia.com. You never mentioned encyclopedia.com. That's right. And uh, Chris Ennis's book, Entertaining Women, Actresses, Dancers, and Singers in the Old West. Yeah, man. I mean, look. Dudes are fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Dudes are fucked up. Yeah. It, it really is strange that there's still basically a monopoly on, I mean, on white dudes being in charge. At, the, at some point, you would think that we would, I mean, we should self-topple, you know? Like, it's just, I think we are right I mean, now. we are, for sure. <laughs> but it's still like, it would have been nice if, you know, it didn't have to be this way. It's just. Yeah. But look, people always say if we ever were in charge, it'd be a lot better. But, you know, I always think like, well, how's Margaret Thatcher? Like. The best. The thing about. The thing about our society and particularly capitalism is it allows psychopaths to rise to power. Well, and so also, you're just going to get women psychopaths. I mean, uh, also, if someone dies, it's like they're ba they're absolved. It keeps happening. Oh, like with Colin Powell, well, Colin when Powell, Ron and Reagan died. Colin like Powell's the, a fucking monster. Yeah, like, by I, the way, I love, he, I guarantee you right now. He's, get, someone, he's getting one. Someone, Colin Powell's someone, getting one. But I guarantee you right now, someone's like, hey, I got through it without fucking being too political. <laughs> And then I'm well, like, you know what? Powell. Yeah, also fucking turn it off. If uh, you don't want to hear our, our dumb leftist opinions when the show's over, fucking turn it stop off. Stop it at the end. Yeah. yeah just stop um, it. The story's over. But no, it's true. It doesn't matter who you are. You die and you're the you're you're back. You're okay. I mean, it is it is a it is an incredibly dangerous part of our society that it, it, if you wore a military uniform, you can literally do whatever in the fuck you want. The, the, you can be the worst human beings, and they're like, "Yeah, but he sacrificed so much." No, did he? Did he? Yeah, I don't. Well, yeah, it's also I think you know, yeah. When you place, when you when lives have different value, uh, put on them, that's a problem. When you say yeah. one for one, you know, one for a hundred is the same. It's like I don't think yeah, that. I don't know how a, you kind of get there. Do you know what math is? <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. All right. December 16th, momenthouse.com slash spec slash the dollar. And then uh, San Diego. December 10th. December 10th. Join us.